in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I think Cubase 10 has a big chance at becoming the next digital audio workstation standard. Hi, my name is Joey Sturgis and welcome to the Joey Sturgis Tones YouTube channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And to all my subscribers, welcome back. Don't forget to like this video and ring the bell to get notified when we upload new videos. So let's get into it. For those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Cubase user and I have been for years. It's really the first DAW I ever worked with that just clicked for me and it made the entire recording process easy and streamlined. My workflow has grown and changed over the years, but you know, Cubase has always been a consistent piece of my process. And with the latest Cubase release, Cubase 10, I think Steinberg has really added some amazing new features that just might help it become the new standard in recording. There's been a huge facelift to the entire DAW, but the updates with this release are so much more than that from both a workflow and technical standpoint. First, I'll tell you some of the features that I absolutely love in Cubase 10, starting with the clean and minimalist layout. There are plenty of technical feature related reasons for choosing your DAW, but it all kind of starts with how the program looks. A great looking DAW that's easy to navigate inspires your workflow as much as, if not more than, the editing and mixing features themselves. A non-intuitive DAW is a recipe for trouble in the studio, which is why this new Cubase layout is a huge benefit. They've kept things clean and minimalist. There's nothing extra cluttering up your view when you just need something straightforward to work in. All the menus are easily accessible when you need to get to them, like standard top menus, track menus on the left, and a media effective browser on the right, and you can hide it when you're not using it. And on top of that, the metering and routing is clear and instinctive. Simply put, everything is just right where it needs to be. Next, let's talk about creating new tracks. If you're tracking in Cubase, their updated new track menu is designed to be easier to use than ever. Rather than creating your tracks and handling the routing in and out of the second menu in the old way, they've consolidated all of the most needed settings into this new menu. You can create multiple tracks with mono or stereo configurations and name them all right from one screen. This new menu is a huge time saver over other DAWs that have you create the track on one screen and then name them on another and then route them in a third. It's just all in one place. Now let's dive into flexible workflow. If you're not starting from a blank session, uh, Cubase has some huge feature improvements for working with existing tracks. Let's say for example that you're a mixer that you know, just received a bunch of tracks recorded in another studio at like 96 kilohertz, but you prefer to mix at 48 kilohertz. Cubase has improved their resampling to make sure that the, any sample rate changes are performed with the highest level of accuracy. They've also introduced 32-bit native support for further resolution improvements. Once you've got everything into your session, Cubase has introduced simplified mono to stereo and stereo to mono options to help with track setup and editing. It's now as easy as selecting the tracks that you want to combine or split and navigating to the Convert Tracks menu. Finally, comping is a breeze in Cubase 10 with drag and drop functionality. The lanes spill out naturally under the main track where you can easily audition and drag your favorites to the top. This is a huge time saver when it comes to vocal editing. Now let's move on to using plugins. Perhaps one of the coolest UI improvements for Cubase is their new plugin menu navigation. The new effect instrument viewer is searchable and includes a new screenshot view of each and every VST plugin. By default, all of the Cubase plugins have a screenshot, but you might see some placeholders for some of the plugins. Within any plugin though, you're able to click on a camera icon that takes a snapshot of your current view of the plugin and assigns it automatically to this menu. This means finding your new favorite virtual guitar rig, compressors, or whatever is now a breeze if you struggle to remember the names of the processors. It looks pretty great too. Speaking of plugins, all of the stock Cubase plugins got a major innovation with the latest Cubase update. While longtime Cubase users might recognize some classic plugins, they've all received new looks for the release of Cubase 10. The new skins look more modern and intuitive, which is great considering some of them were beginning to feel a bit dated. There are also new additions like the Destroyer Distortion plugin and the new IRs included with Cubase's classic convolution reverb, Reverence. And these new options add to what already felt like a complete lineup of plugins in Cubase, but they're welcome additions for sure. Let's talk about sample libraries. If the plugins alone aren't cutting it for you, Cubase has added a massive 5GB sample library as well. 
This library includes all kinds of virtual instruments, drum samplers, uh, standard loops, and all of this can be added to your sessions. I'm especially a big fan of the cinematic samples that have been added to Cubase. They're great pieces of audio to work with in your music productions, and things like orchestra samples, explosions, and more are readily available with the DAW without having to go out and purchase additional sample libraries from third parties. Now we're going to go into Very Audio 3. Continuing the trend of replacing third-party software with built-in features, Cubase 10 comes with Very Audio 3 Editor, which is possibly the single greatest addition. While past iterations of Very Audio allowed you to do some basic audio manipulation, the new release makes it way easier than ever before. Now you can edit things like pitch, formant, vibrato, tilt, and even volume, note by note, right within the Very Audio interface. No more jumping back to a menu each time that you want to edit a different element of the note. The corners of each one of these have become the controls on the note itself. This stands in contrast with several of the third-party options and should speed up your editing quite a bit. Best of all, native features tend to reduce your reliance on CPU and RAM, freeing up your system resources for more plugins or more stuff in your session. Now I want to talk about audio alignment. Audio alignment is another huge feature that has had an instant impact on my workflow personally. Time aligning a doubled vocal was a tedious process before that required a huge attention to detail. There have been third party solutions to this on the market for years, but they always have been inconsistent and not very transparent. With the audio alignment in Cubase 10, you set your lead vocal as the reference track, the double as the alignment track and process it. The engine behind this seems to be one of the most accurate ones I've ever used, and I haven't really found myself needing to align anything any further. Let's wrap up today with mix snapshots. Wrapping up a mix can be a headache, especially when revisions are needed. Often each revision would require duplicating the session if you wanted to retain the old mix so you could go back to it, and if you didn't, you just ended up overriding the old with the new. With Cubase 10, mix snapshots will let you archive your revisions as you work and recall them later if needed. This is a huge bonus when you're working with bands or labels that change their minds about all the edits and stuff that they request. It can also be a great way to capture your vocal up or vocal down or instrumental mixes all within a single session. Even remixers should find a benefit to the snapshot functionality, giving themselves a way to return to the unprocessed session quickly to compare something to the original. These snapshots can account for as much or as little of your session as you want. Just want to take a snapshot of the fader levels? That's fine. Or maybe you'd rather capture your current inserts and settings. That can be done too. It's a great way to track different parts of your mix and integrate with just about any workflow. Does Cubase check off a lot of the boxes that modern mixers and audio engineers need? Is something missing that you wish they'd include in Cubase 11? Let me know what you think. Come share your experiences with Cubase 10 over at the Joey Sturgis Tones Facebook group. And if you're looking for guidance on navigating Cubase 10 and all of the processing available in it, be sure to check out the JST VIP program. JST VIP members get exclusive access to expert training tutorials and more to help you take your audio productions to the next level. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you got another audio buddy who would love this content, please share it and hit the bell to get notified when we upload new videos. Now, don't forget to check the link in the description below before you go. You're the best. We'll see you soon.